language, we will be doing page 19 and page 20. All right, but first, let's review the comma rules. All right, one of the comma rules we already looked at was to add a um, comma and a conjunction to correct a run-on sentence. We learned that when we were learning our own sentences. But then we learned two new rules yesterday. One of them was after everybody, come on. Yes, yes or no. that section together. Um, it says read the following sentences and use pre the marks to add necessary commas and you've got to add end punctuation too. Yes. So you would know that word. All right, number one says Mrs. Perry, look at my new notebook. So what do we do first? Just call it out guys. Comma after Mrs. Perry. You're talking to Mrs. Perry. What kind of sentence? Yes, don't forget to insert. Put that little insert mark and the comma above it. And don't make your commas too big. What, what ending punctuation does it have? Period. Period. Because it is a not declarative. I heard somebody say it. Imperative. It's a command. Remember, you're telling her, look at this. What is the picture on the front of it, Josh? Where are we going to put no. Before, Josh. Before Josh, because you are talking to Josh. She is asking him about his notebook. What is the picture on the front of it, Josh? So, and how is the punctuation at the end of the sentence going to be? A question mark, because that's an interrogative sentence. She's asking him a question. My notebook has a picture of a red-eyed tree frog. It is just declared. Very good. 
this. There's no comma. You're not talking to anybody in that sentence, or you're not calling them by name, I should say. Because obviously she was talking to somebody, but she did not call him by name. So it's simply a declarative sentence. Do you know, Mrs. Perry, where the red-eyed tree frog lives? Come on, talk to me. This is big Q. Before and after Mrs. Perry, you need to insert commas. And then the punctuation at the end? Question mark. A question mark. Very good. It is an interrogative sentence again. You're asking Mrs. Perry a question. All right, you did not put it in front of Mrs. I've got some people that are putting it before and after the word Perry. Her name is Mrs. Perry. So the first comma needs to be go before Mrs. And the second comma needs to go after Perry. Everybody check that. Make sure you did it that way. The first comma in front of Mrs. Mrs. Perry is her name. <coughs> Not just Perry. Okay? Did you erase it well? Erase it well. No. Let's find out. After Just no. Know. After no. Yes or no. And it could be, or it could just be declarative. I'm going to see if they're giving you it. Declarative. Oh, it is imperative. No, it is. It's a command. Let's find out. Let's find out. In, You're right. That's imperative. imperative. That's imperative. So it's not exclamatory. No, they don't have it as exclamatory. They have it as imperative. I think, class, that we should look in this animal book. Okay. After class. After class. What? What's after class? Before and after. Before and after. Before and after class. Before and after class. You're going to insert those commas because you are talking to the class. The teacher is not talking to the class. And it is not imperative, like you guys, because she says, I think that we should look. She doesn't say, look in the book. She says, I think that we should look. So she's saying, I think that we should look. So it is just a declarative yeah. sentence. Either way, it would have gotten a period. But I believe that one is just declarative, not imperative. What about, what a brightly colored frog? Exclamatory. Exclamatory. Do we need any commas? No. No, no I'm not talking to anybody. But it is insert exclamation mark at the end of that sentence. Its eyes are bright red and its feet are bright orange. Declarative. That is true. No, I would go with declarative. It's just telling. They're just telling us what color it is. But there's something else. No, there is a comma. What was the first rule we ever learned? What was it? So we're talking about no, it's not. It's not that it's rule. run-on sentence. It's a run. It was a run-on sentence. They fixed it. They made it be a compound sentence. So you guys see that? Look, oh, it yeah. says its eyes are bright red. Oh. So after the word red, you need a comma before the word and the connecting word, and then the second sentence is and its feet are bright orange. So they combine two sentences into a compound sentence. Way to go. That was great. This book says that they live in Central America, Josh. Before Josh. Before Josh. Because his name is at the end. And then what kind of sentence is it? Declarative. Insert a period at the end. All right, and thank you, Josh, for showing us your new notebook. Before and after Josh. Before and after Josh. And what kind of sentence would it be? No. Sometimes you might be super excited, but if somebody was just showing me a notebook, I would just be very politely saying thank you. I wouldn't be getting all excited about a notebook. There's other things I get more excited about. she said, wow, this notebook's really awesome, Josh. Yeah. So it's just a declarative. She's just thanking him. All right, the next thing we're going to do is at the bottom we need to proofread or marks, correct those paragraphs using our proofreader marks. This is again about the red-eyed tree frog. So we need to capitalize some of the words and insert punctuation where needed. Why do you think God made the red-eyed tree frog so colorful? Capitalize the word why. Yes, capitalize the word why and the end of that sentence would be? But where is the end of the sentence? After colorful. Yes, after the word colorful. 
That is one question. Why do you think God made the red-eyed tree frog so colorful? They actually have already capitalized the next word for you. This frog is nocturnal. Declare it. So insert after the word nocturnal, insert a period, and then of course you need to capitalize the next word because that's the beginning of a new sentence. It sleeps all day under a leaf. And I do believe they already have the punctuation there, don't they? But then you need to capitalize the next sentence, which is beginning with the word if. If an enemy comes to eat it, the red-eyed tree frog wakes up. Insert a period and capitalize. If an enemy comes to eat it, the red-eyed tree frog wakes up. We well, already said that. I just need somebody to find where you're supposed to put the period. After all. Yes, after the word up. Do you need one of those markers, hon? Okay. So after the word up, give you declarative and capitalize, which is the word his. So capitalize his because it's the beginning of the next sentence. Mm -hmm. Capitalize his. Oh, you did already. Good. Can it be explanatory because it says his big eyes are so scary? We haven't even read that one yet. Oh. <laughs> You're getting ahead of me. His big red eyes look scary. Explanatory. It could be. Does it have to be? No. No. It doesn't have to be, but it could be. But I think it should be, so let's go do that. <coughs> All right. And the next one's already capitalized, so that sentence says... He stretches his legs to show his bright orange feet. And the next word is capitalized, so we know we need to stop there. What kind of sentence would that be? Declarative. Just declarative. So after the word feet, insert a period. Okay. Eric, are you making sure you write the right word, or are you just doing it at the end of the line? This is not about just putting punctuation in the lines. That is not where the ends of the sentences are. You're supposed to be inserting a period after the word feet. And I've seen you put periods at the end of the line, and then you went to the beginning of the next line, and that was not where the word feet was. You need to be following along as we're doing this. I have a feeling that you're not going to have these right. How big they look. Explanatory. 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 you and me later because you're not listening. All right, the next thing is his bright blue and yellow stripes startle the enemy. Capitalize his. Yes, capitalize H and his and they already have a punctuation, don't they? Yes. All right, the last one is no, this colorful frog is not a good snack. <laughs> you don't like to be like it. Yes, you do. Insert a comma after yes or no at the beginning of a sentence. So there's the word no, so comma, insert. Don't forget to insert the comma. All right, very good. All right, now we're going to talk about paragraphs. That was a paragraph. I'm going to read another paragraph to you. I have enjoyed learning about nocturnal creatures. A raccoon is an interesting animal that is also very smart. Gray wolves hunt together at night. I have a nightlight in my bedroom. Fowler's toad is a great animal to have in your garden. Fireflies are especially beautiful nocturnal creatures. Now, what was that paragraph about? Um, nocturnal creatures. Yes, but did you hear something happen in the paragraph that I read it that did not belong there? Then. The sentence about your nightlight. Yes, that sentence about a nightlight had nothing to do with nocturnal creatures, correct? Yeah. All right, so we're not going to actually write a paragraph today, but once you turn your paper over, we're going to talk about planning to write a paragraph. So if I were going to write a paragraph, say, about outdoor activities, I would make a list of activities that you would enjoy doing outdoors. 
And then I possibly would pick one of those activities and maybe make details about how you do that activity. And then I write a paragraph about that particular activity. Now, if I was just making a paragraph about different act or activities, I would just write uh, about outdoor activities and not get specific. But sometimes you want to write about a specific topic, so you would have to write detail. All right, so let's look at the top of the back of the page, and you will see what I mean by that. So it says a topic is the main idea you're writing about. It says look at the topic and read the details below it, and notice how each detail is about the topic. All right, so the topic was nocturnal creatures, and underneath that, they listed different nocturnal creatures. Raccoons, gray wolves, fowler's toads, or fireflies. But let's say that I told you to write a report about a specific nocturnal creature. So this time the topic was red-eyed tree frogs. And this time you have to get more details. You can't just make a list. All right, so underneath that they say, number one, they lay their eggs on leaves and water. Number two, young frogs have brown bodies and yellow eyes. Number three, they sleep curled up on a leaf during the day. Number four, the adults' brightly colored bodies may startle their enemies. And number five, they eat insects at night. That's why they're nocturnal creatures, right? So then you would take those details that you learned from whatever you, when you did your research, and you would turn that into a paragraph. Please put your pencil down and pay attention. So what we're going to do is we're going to do two different things. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to make a list, like they made a list of nocturnal creatures. You are going to make a list of breakfast foods. And we can talk this out and we can rank them on the board. And the second thing is um, you are going to do my favorite foods. They started the sentences for you for the details. They started by saying my favorite salty food is, and you need to put something, my favorite fruit is, and you put something. My favorite dinner is, and you put something. And my favorite sweet treat is. Okay, so this will be sort of fun. And you will come up with an idea for each one of those. And we will talk about it and we will write some of these on the board.